As you start working through um, your ER diagramming and um, creating business rules for your, your final course project, um, I wanted to just give you a short video um, that allows me to, to talk about some pieces of database that design that I think are a little bit tricky when you're working in an online environment um, because when you guys are as students just trying to apply the theory that you're reading about in all the context and the text or the, the content of the course, um, it's hard to sometimes translate that into um, a real application. So these are some, some things that I would normally t um, talk to students about when I, we're in an on-campus environment. So um, I wanted to share them with you as well to help maybe bridge that gap between um, between the, the theoretical um, descriptions that you're reading about in creating ERDs and and writing business rules and then actually to to actually really doing them. So, um, so first, what let's talk about what do you do first? Do you write business rules first or do you um, create your ERD first? And what I would say to that is while it's an iterative process and, and you'll continually kind of be going back and forth between your ERD and your business rules, making sure everything um, correlates, um, it's usually best to create the ERD first. So what we do is we think think about your business your business description. What is your 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 business case? What will you be needing to store data about? So in maybe like um so let's say I have you know an online ordering environment. I know that I'm going to have to store information, data, actual data about customers, about products, about their or a customer's order, that type of thing. So when I start to think about like what data needs to be stored, that's where I get the nouns of the customer of um, order, of products, um, things like that. So um, so those are going to then turn into my entities in my diagram. So then when I kind of have an idea of what the entities are, um, I create a, an initial ER diagram and say, you know what, I think that a customer data needs to be related to that customer's order data, right? So there's going to be a, a line in my ER diagram between customer and order. So this line represents a relationship. So when I say there has to be a business rule, two business rules to define every relationship, it's going to relate to this th what we see in an ER diagram as being this line that connects these two entities, okay? So, um, so after I create the ERD and then I look at that ERD and say, okay, so what are the business rules that define the relationship between the data in, in that relationship? So the data between the data of a customer and the data of an order, what is the business rule that explains that relationship? And we'll talk about business rules um, in a second. Um, so first I want to just def define what is a business rule? Okay, because this can be kind of confusing, and I think I think the name business rule is just a little bit um, kind of a misnomer because it really should be called like a relationship rule. <laughs> because when we say re business rule in database design, um, it's easy to think about policies and procedures, kind of procedurally what happens in a business. What we're really talking about in database design is a business rule that defines the relationship between two pieces of data. So let's look at an example of that. I think this is the number one most difficult thing that people have a hard time with is understanding what, what we mean by business rules. So let's say that we have, um, and, and I think this is probably in your textbook, I believe, a student and course relationship. So let's say we have a, a student and a entity and a course entity. Obviously, we have information we want to store about a student. We have information we want to store about a course, right? So... Um, so I have a list of students. Remember that in an entity, those have to be unique values, so only one row per student. Then um, in my course table, remember there has to be a unique um, value for every course, so there's only course each course listed one time in this table, right, to, um, to ensure that we have um, entity integrity, okay? That's, um, so making sure that primary key value can be unique. So when we're looking at the relationship, trying to define the business rules, we have to read 
the relationship both ways. How many, how does a student relate to a course and how many instances really of, of a student relates to a course and how many instances in a, of a course can relate to a student? So these are the business rules that I've, that I've come up with. A student enrolls in one or more courses, right? We have to account for all possibilities. Maybe a student has just, um, just enrolled in one, one course. Maybe a student has enrolled in 60 courses over the lifetime of their college career, okay? Um, then we need to read it the other way and say a course, one specific, remember it's just one row in this entity, one course can be taken by many, one or more students. So one course can be taken by, um, you know, a, a hundreds of thousands of different students over the lifetime of this course being developed, right, or being um, available. So it's one instance of a student, how many times, how many um, courses can it be associated with? That's the first one. And then with one instance of a course, how many students can be associated with that one course? Okay. So by looking at these two, I see that I actually have a many-to-many -many relationship between student and course. A student can take many courses. That's the many side on the course side. And a, um, and a, a course can be taken by many students. So then there's a, a, a crow's foot notation. If we have crow's foot notation, we should see a, a, the, the many um, depicted on both sides of this relationship, on the student side and the course side. So then, so, so we, uh, first I want to back up. So this is, this is incredibly important that in every single relationship, every time you have two entities connected by a line in your ER diagram, we should see exactly, no more, no less, exactly two business rules that define that relationship. A bi-directional business rule that goes both ways, okay? So this one little example, a student and course, you're going to definitely see two relationships that I have defined here, and, that, and they define how many instances of one student I mean, how many, yeah, how many instances of a course can be associated with one student and how many instances uh, or how many students can be associated with one course, okay? So, so once we've gotten there, we see, okay, this is a many-to-many -many relationship, okay? So we understand how, we, how our ERD then relates to our business rules and our business rules and our ERD should, should correlate. I should be able to look at your ERD and see you have two entities, a, a student and a course, and you have a relationship between them, and I should see a many side um, on the course side and a many um, um, kind of crow's foot notation on the student side. That's because I can see your business rules right here. So I think, oh, okay, I, these two things have to go together, okay? So um, in, a, in the real world, Everybody, all the stakeholders involved in a database design have to agree on that relationship. Like, is that true? Is that true from, from everybody's perspective that a student can be, a, can, um, be um, related to more than one course? And can a course be related to one, more than one student ID? So if that is the case, everybody agrees on that. Everybody can understand that at a very basic level, whether they're looking at the ER diagram or the business rules and say, yes, that is the way that data is related okay so then since we have this many-to-many -many relationship here we know that we should know from from the textbook that many-to-many's cannot actually be physically in, implemented in a relational database so it is a true relationship we never want to modify a relationship because we don't want to end up with a many-to-many. -many. We don't want to say, oh, it's not a many-to-many -many because I know that that's not possible. No, this relationship between student and course is technically a many-to-many -many relationship. And that's how it should be defined in my business rules. This is what it is. However, since we know that this can't physically be implemented, then we have to um, do what we call resolving this many-to-many -many relationship so that it can be implemented in a database. So to do this, um, we need to, um, to resolve many-to-many's, we need to walk through just a few steps. So you can see here I have student and course, okay? And, and, and kind of the, the, the verb that, that describes that relationship is kind of the, word, the verb enrolls, okay? 
So the reason I know that the reason that this can't this might be confusing when I just say it can't be implemented. What does that mean? It can't be implemented because if I have unique instances of a course ID over here, let's say course um, 100. Okay, I have a course XX100. It can only be listed in here because of entity integrity. It can only be listed in this table one time. Correct. So. Also, same thing with student. A student can only be listed one time in this class, I mean in this student table, okay? So what happens when a student takes more than one course? How do I actually tie that data? I can't. I physically can't do it because that would require me to either have multiple course IDs or multiple student IDs for the same student or same course. So that's why it physically can't be implemented. So what do we do to actually um, resolve that? Well, it's actually just a, a series of specific steps. This is how it's always done. Okay. Um, so if we want we're, to resolve it, there's always going to be, um, we're always going to end up with a new entity. We call that a bridge entity, or sometimes it's called a composite entity. Um, and so this new entity will be in between the first two original um, many-to-many -many, um, defined um, entities. And it's always going to end up where now there is a many there is a new many um, descriptor right here on the bridge entity on both sides. And then there's always going to be the one side on the original entities, always. Okay, so this is just how it happens. So you now have a one to many and a one to many. Okay, um, when this happens, first I want to tell you that the business rules don't need to change. You can now think, well, now I have two relationships here, so I'm really needing four business rules, right? So um, between student and class, there would be two, and then between class and course, there would be two. But technically, um, you can do that. And the, and the book kind of does it both ways sometimes. But but I like for you guys to just leave it as if I see a many-to-many -many that's resolved, I know this is a, res a resolved many-to-many -many just looking at it, okay? And so I would actually in this instance expect to see only two business rules that define the many-to-many -many relationship between student and course that we already did. Okay, so I don't want you to go back and then say, oh, well, now I have to er erase those two business rules and create, you know, one for this relationship and one for this relationship. Because the business rules that you've already defined, define it as an actual many-to-many, -many, and it is. Okay, so I don't want you to then say, well, this is, you know, this is what this one-to-many is here, and this is what this one-to-many is here in terms of business rules. That's, we don't, I don't want you to have to go back and do that. So, so... So, but from a diagramming perspective, it's always the one side on the original entity and the many on the bridge or composite entity. In addition, you need to give this brand new entity a name. So what makes most sense in this case is we have a student that enrolls in a the, that can enroll in a course and a course that can be enrolled in by many students. When this happens, what actually is happening is a class. So this specific class is going to have um, a primary key of class ID, we're just going to make that up and make it a, a randomly generated ID. It also is going to have a foreign key relationship to a specific student and a foreign key relationship to a specific course ID. Or, yeah, to a specific course ID. So then we can have other, um, I haven't listed any more attributes here, but there would be attributes like, you know, date and time of this course, um, the semester that this course falls in, the year, that type of thing. Um, so there's a lot of information that, that is specific to this actual class happening. So a course just has information about like a course ID and a course description, things like that. But there wouldn't be any information in the course table about a date or a semester or a term or a year because the course um, is just, this is just specific information about a course. The student, same thing. It wouldn't, um, student information is going to be like name, address, date of birth, you know, things that are specific to the student. But the actual student taking a class doesn't happen until course and student come together in this in this um, bridge entity. Okay, um, so 
So that answers why we can't have a many-to-many and how we resolve many-to-many relationships. So I hope this has been helpful to you um, in, in really solidifying what a business rule is because I think that's the very first issue that a lot of people have is just getting confused with with a, a database business rule versus just a business rule that you have, you know, in terms of how your your business processes. Um, so we, we really want to spec- want to um, to look at the relationships again and see what we think the the relationship is between two entities. So go ahead and send those. So actually, this is a good idea. If you want to just send me a list of what you you know a short blurb about what your business case is. Then this is what the entities that I think I have identified. Um, I can tell you, okay, I think maybe you're missing an entity that maybe you haven't thought about this data that you need to store. Or maybe for the simplicity of this course, maybe you have just made it a little bit bigger than it than it should be because we want to keep it to just a few entities so that we can really focus on the foundational concepts here and not on just the complexity of, of a large design. So um, so you could send me your, you know, a little blurb about what your business does so I can understand what your, what, how the data probably does, is related. Um, and then um, maybe your business rules and um, a little mock-up or a, a little initial ERD. And I should see that the business rules actually um, correlate exactly to your ERD. Your ERD, if there's a if there's a one-to-many in your ERD, I should see business rules that are written in a way where it says um, something like a customer, um, let's see, a customer can place many orders between customer and order, but an order belongs to one and only one customer. That is a one-to-many relationship. So I can tell by your business rules what I'm going to see in your ERD, and then I can be looking at your ERD and know what I should be seeing in your business rules. Okay, so they they should absolutely always um, correlate. Um, and so that's why it's an iterative process because maybe you think, oh wait, maybe I didn't think about you know that that this is a many to many because I just defined my business rules wrong. Okay, then I need to go back to my biz- my ERD and modify that to reflect that it's you know actually in a one to many when I thought it was a one to um, a one to one or something. Um, and another note, really quick, on a one to one, just since I've mentioned it, um, one to one relationships are very 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 uncommon. So if you think you have a one to one relationship, I would. <laughs> you need to rethink it because it's pretty um it's I'm almost positive that you're actually you probably have a one to many relationship that you just aren't um maybe you just haven't thought about what how that should work. So if you have a one to one, don't understand um and you just want someone me to maybe look at it and tell you why you don't have a one to one, um I'd be happy to do that and do that in the in the um the discussion forum so that we can all learn from that. Um so as you you're working through your ERD and your business rules this week, just keep um, just just keep chugging along. Please keep asking as many questions as you can. I know this is just kind of um, it's it's just such a, a different process that that it's just it's sometimes hard to get, grasp right at the beginning. Um, as you move through this um, this course, I promise you by the end you will think, oh gosh, why did I why did I think writing a business rule was difficult? Um, or I, you know how how did I did I not understand that at the beginning? But um, but it it really truly is just uh, just something that's difficult to grasp. Um, at the beginning. So the more you do it, the better you'll get. Um, Please ask any questions that you might have, and I look forward to um, seeing all of your ERDs um, and your finished product.